Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Hammered Corner. In today's video, we will be looking into a brief history of Elizabeth I coinage and learning the main parts of the coins minted during her reign. Like translating and reading legends, how to ID coins, and what characteristics makes different denominations so it's easier to ID your hammered coins of this era. Elizabeth I reigned from 1558 to 1603, ascending to the English throne after the death of her sister, Mary Tudor. So by the 1560s, newly minted Elizabethan coinage had helped to renew the trust of the people in England's currency at home and abroad. Kings and queens would increase taxes if they needed silver for war. Henry VIII debased his coins, replacing large parts of the silver in the coins with base metals, trying to fool the public. So by the time Elizabeth took the throne, she inherited one of the most debased coinages in history. All of the high-valued silver was hoarded and debased coinage circulated as worthless currency. But in 1560, Thomas Gresham was in charge of melting down all debased coinage and replaced it with newly minted coins made of precious metals. She even made a profit of £50,000. The restoration of coinage improved dealings of English merchants abroad and secured trust and respect from the city for Queen Elizabeth and her government. The confidence that it bred also allowed for the expansion in the trade and industry that followed. After 45 years on the throne, it isn't hard to see why her coins are found so commonly by detectorists and why her coins are widely available to purchase. So firstly, I will go through and translate the legends surrounding her coins. Starting from the top above the queen's head, we have the mint mark. And we're going to go clockwise. So the first part reads the monarch's name, Elizabeth. And next to it, stopped by a dot, is a D. And next to that is a G. De gratia. Translates by the grace of God. Then next to that we have ANG, Anglia, so England. We have FRA. France, E.T. and H.I.B. Ireland, R.E.G.I.N.A. Which stands for Queen. So we have Elizabeth, by the grace of God, Queen of England, France and Ireland. So if we flip over to the reverse, starting to the right of the mint mark, we have Posvi, we have D-E-V-A-D-I-V-T-O-R-E-M. And then we have M-E-V, which translates to I have made God my helper. This next part will show you all of the silver coin denominations minted under Elizabeth. So, from smallest to largest in value, we have the half penny, three farthings, one penny, three half pence, which is one and a half pence, Half a groat, or two pence. Three pence. A groat, or four pence. Six pence. Shilling, or twelve pence. A half crown, which is two shillings and a sixpence. Or a crown, which is five shillings. Please note that Elizabeth I later issued half crowns and full crowns in gold but as a beginner focus on the silver coinage you're most likely to collect up next i'm going to show you a quick tip on how to quickly learn each denomination so firstly the half crown and crown have a unique obverse design being the only two coins of elizabethan silver coinage to display a three-quarter portrait holding her spectre secondly the two coins that don't follow this pattern are the half penny and the half groat. The half penny has a portcullis design with no portrait, and the half groat shows two pellets right of the bust, displaying two pence. Now, lastly, the two main groups are coins with a rose and date and those without. Now, please note that there are some rare exceptions that don't follow this pattern, but aren't very common. So, coins that have a rose and date are sixpence. 
the three pence, three and a half pence, and the three farthings. Now, you can see the correlation in the pattern, but what coin it actually is will be down to diameter or bust, depending on your experience. Then those without are the shilling, the groat, and the penny. Now, these are easier to ID, as the sizes are dramatically different. And lastly, milled coins. Milled coins are coins minted with a milled edge, like this one. The small lines are to deter people from clipping bits of silver off, like they did with hammered coins. If they could see the edges of the coins were clipped, they wouldn't be accepted. People used to cut small pieces of silver off hammered coins to make up for the clipped coins they would receive for goods and pay. Higher quality coins were produced under the supervision of Frenchman Eloy Mestrel. They were produced using a screw press powered by horses, but it wasn't very successful due to it being slower and more expensive. Now thank you all for watching, and special thanks to my friend Josh Catamol for his help with historical information. And you can find links to all info used down below. For all updates, coin tickets and accessories, please follow the link in the description. And please let me know below what videos you'd like to see here on the Hammond Corner. And as always, keep collecting!